Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this new uh, Edge team update. I'm Remy. I'm the Edge team lead, and um, today we'll go uh, with the same agenda as uh, for every update. Uh, so what we've done in the last five weeks, uh, what uh, will be done in the last in the next five weeks, um, the current low lights, and uh, you will have time for. So let's get started. Um, so Mark Fletcher uh, made a great landing page for the issue bashes. Uh, so it uh, contains everything that um, community um, members uh, need to know to get started uh, with the issue bash. Uh, so uh, feel free to check it out and uh, improve it. And then uh, we, so Shinya uh, was a, a very active contributor in the last uh, few months. And so it was actually the 9.2 MVP. And uh, we uh, considered uh, to invite him to the core team, but uh, unfortunately we hired uh, him uh, before. So unfortunately for the core team uh, is, is now part of the GitLab uh, Inc team. So we are still uh, super happy with that. And uh, welcome, Shinya, to the CICD team. Uh, next, uh, we accepted uh, um, some really nice uh, community contributions, as always. Uh, so I won't go into uh, each, each uh, one of them, but uh, here, here is a, a non-exhaustive list of the um, the most, uh, uh, the, yeah, the biggest ones, uh, let's say. And we also had a, a lot of documentation fixes uh, from the community. So that's always great. Um, next up is uh, regarding the quality. So we, we are always um, enabling uh, more Rubocop. So Rubocop uh, for the one uh, who uh, don't know it, uh, it's a static analysis tool. So it, it, uh, it's analyzing um, the code base and uh, uh, it reports offenses to the, 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 the cops or the rules that are enabled. Um, so this time we've enabled a few spec-related cops. Um, and uh, security related one also, and uh, style consistency cup, and we are always um, adding more and more. Okay. Um, then uh, regarding the productivity, so the edge team is uh, one of the focuses to improve the productivity of the other developers. So as you may know, we, we have a lot of uh, transient failures uh, in our test suite. So it's, it's an un ongoing effort uh, to fix them. We fixed a lot of them. Um, a big shout out to, uh, uh, to Luke, uh, Luke Bennett. Um, I, he, he was uh, uh, very involved in, in solving them in the last few weeks. Um, we also identified uh, uh, a failure that we had in the CI. Uh, it was an out of memory failure. Uh, so hopefully it, it's fixed. Um, it was related to a WebKit issue. Uh, um, then the next one is uh, we sped up the booting of GitLab, uh, the Rails app, so uh, approximately by 50%. Um, thanks to a, um, a gem uh, developed by uh, Shopify, um, uh, an open source gem. So that's really great. Uh, and we've also started to uh, work on um, scripts to uh, streamline the developer's experience and to, um, to have a um, consistent experience between all the GitLab projects. Uh, basically, you will have like uh, scripts and in, in a script folder uh, to uh, uh, bootstrap uh, the project, set up it, uh, um, uh, insert records in the database, and stuff like that. 
Uh, so Yorick uh, did a great job um, uh, to add uh, a lot of documentation uh, regarding uh, the changes about, um, so as you can see, um, it's related, almost all of them are related to uh, active records or the database uh, somehow. So basically, the the thing is that as uh, GitLab needs to need to needs to to uh, scale more and to be more performant, we have to um, to kind of leave the the Rails uh, way uh, of doing things. Like uh, we we are going away from using the serialized method from Active Records. Uh, we are uh, we are uh, going to use uh, actual foreign keys for the database. Um, and we are also going away from uh, polymorphic and single table inheritance. So this, uh, the first step uh, in doing that is to have a, a great documentation to to know what what are the the alternatives and, and the new ways uh, to do that. So thanks, Eric, uh, a lot for that. Um, on the development side, so uh, new features. Uh, Mark uh, Fletcher uh, contributed uh, an events API because it will be needed for uh, for to analyze uh, the, the the issue bashes uh, contribu contributions basically. So we we now have a quite useful events API. Um, thanks again to Yorick, we also uh, will be also able to uh, perform background uh, mig migrations. So basically it's uh, migrations that will be uh, run as uh, sidekick, sidekick jobs uh, to, to sum it up. And another feature is the introduction of a perform performance bar. Uh, it will be behind the feature, uh, but basically you will be able to profile uh, the, the current page uh, to see the, the SQL queries, um, but also the, the uh, queries made to Redis um, and profile uh, the, the code base with uh, Ruby line profiler. Uh, so that was for the last five weeks. Uh, in the next five weeks, uh, we'll uh, work on speed up the, the test suite. Um, Robert is working on that. So, uh, but yeah, for in the last in the last weeks, uh, Robert has has uh, worked for the uh, a few a few uh, other teams like the production team. So, uh, I I hope that he can uh, focus on that more and. Uh, I'm really looking forward to to seeing this trick um, about the um, signing um, way. Uh, how to say that? Basically, it will it will not perform a, a, a real signing in in the feature specs. So instead of going to the signing page, uh, fill the the form and submit it, it will just sign in the user straight away. So we'll save a few seconds uh, for each uh, feature spec. Uh, Maybe not a few seconds, but a few, even a few milliseconds uh, will be uh, will will add up in the end. Uh, we'll we're going to um, replace Poltergeist Porter, so um, with Chrome. So basically, it's the headless browser that we are using for our specs. Um, we had uh, quite a few issues with Poltergeist, um, including the memory, uh, the out of memory failure that I mentioned uh, earlier. So uh, we are hopeful that uh, using Chrome will solve, will improve the situation. Uh, we'll continue to um, enable more cops, uh, Rubo cops uh, for the code quality and, uh, and security and stuff like that. And then we'll streamline the developer experience with, uh, with some scripts, as I said before, um, and uh, will will provide a way to seed uh, millions of, of data in, in uh, um, local environments for developers uh, to to actually uh, see what how their code behaves with a lot of records. Um, it will not be the same as as a real staging or, or production environment, but still it will already uh, uh, come closer to that. Um, 
we'll also uh, automatize CE to EE upstream merges. Um, there's already a, a merge request that that kind of, of works, but uh, it still needs uh, tests and uh, a lot more things in the pipeline. So feel free to check it out. Um, low lights, um, as as always, uh, we still have uh, a lot of red masters um, because of transient failures. So we'll uh, think about uh, a way to detect and uh, retry those. So we'll see. But uh, basically, the idea is uh, there are a few ideas, but um, we could detect detect them and. Uh, as, as soon as we know that they are transient, we could um, allow a pipeline to, to pass uh, if we know that the test is a transient failure, but it, uh, we, it, it still will need to be fixed in the end, of course. Uh, or we could just uh, try to re retry the test in a different uh, context because uh, most of the time it's, it depends on, on the context like the test that ran before uh, the failing test. Um, we still, uh, so yeah, upstream merges from CE to EE uh, still takes uh, a, f a, few, a few days uh, most of the times. So the, the goal is to have a daily merge, um, but most of the time it takes uh, more than that. So uh, we need to better separate EE from CE code so that we have less uh, conflicts and, and less uh, test failures when we merge CE into EE. And um, the, the, the test suite duration is not stable. Um, uh, Knapsack is, is the, the tool that we, we use to uh, balance the test across uh, um, uh, multiple nodes on, on the CI. Uh, so it's doing its, its job, uh, but uh, we suspect that the, the culprit could be that uh, the runners uh, are under loads and it, uh, it means that tests can take uh, more times in certain situations. And um, yeah, that's, that's it for today. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Uh, I saw a question in the chat uh, at the beginning. Do we have the new code climate enabled? Um, I'm not aware of, uh, of that, so I cannot uh, answer this question. Sorry, I can answer this question. Uh, yeah. yeah, not yet. I have a merge request uh, still open, but uh, yeah, it will take a few days. Uh, so in order to have it uh, fully working, we need to have master with code climate jobs completed. And now I'm just waiting for a green master in order to have my merge request ready. So soon, in a few days. Thanks, Remy. Yeah, as soon as we have a, a green master. Before a few days, a green master, of course. <laughs> um, so, okay, I don't see any more questions. Feel free to uh, let me know if you have. Remy, yeah. um, will users be able to enable the performance bar? Yes. So, yeah, the performance bar will be, um, uh, you can enable it with a shortcut. Uh, so, the shortcut is, is a P, PB uh, for now. And uh, yeah, uh, every logged in users will be able to enable the performance bar. Cool, and if it all works, we'll remove the feature flag in 9.4. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Awesome, thanks. Cool, you're welcome. Uh, thank you everyone, and uh, see you in the team call then. <laughs>